Hey guys, uh, welcome to my living room slash my makeshift studio. My garage is currently occupied by my husband's projects, but he was sweet enough to set this up for me so that I could finally get working on Kenzie's vanity. This has been a long time coming. I've been dying to start it. I finally have everything I need. So yeah, let's do this. Um, while Kayleen can show you an amazing makeup tutorial, Elisa as well, obviously, um, and show you all the products they're using on their face. I'm clueless with that stuff, but I can show you the products to use when you're refinishing a piece of furniture. So I've been dying to show you guys my passion and my true, my true love when it comes to my free time. So I'm so excited to show you guys and uh, I'll do it all step by step and do my best to show you guys the products as we go along. So. Yeah, let's get started. First thing I always do is remove hardware um, before cleaning, before anything else has to happen. Always remove the hardware. Whether you plan on keeping the hardware or not, it's gotta come off because there's always like just years worth of dust and crap caked in around everything. It doesn't matter where you got it, how clean you think it is. I always believe in taking off hardware. There's no way to tape it off. There's no way to truly, if you wanna use it or if you don't, you can't preserve the hardware without truly taking it off. And same goes for the chair. I'm actually going to reupholster this chair um, with some fabric or whatever of my choosing. I actually have something already that I have picked out. So I am actually planning on replacing these poles with something else. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna use. I have kind of a problem with just buying poles knowing eventually I'm going to have some type of project eventually that I'm going to use it for. So I have a couple of options, but who knows, I might buy something totally new for these. So either way, this has to come off, the chair has to come off. I'm going to actually completely remove this fabric because this is literally so old and so disgusting. It feels like wet to the touch, which is kind of making me cringe. But either way, all of the, um, Everything that's held together with a screw on anything has got to come out. So yeah, I'm going to start with that. Yeah, this is... That's amazing. how old and disgusting this, this thing is. is. It's literally Gosh. flaking off in my Come hands. One of my favorite things to do since I'm actually reupholstering re this piece is actually see what was underneath. Just like I said, I love old vintage furniture and seeing the old stuff kind of just, I don't know, tickles me, makes me happy. I don't know why anyone would ever use this fabric to cover anything, but I'm sure, you know, in the 60s when whoever chose this, it was very stylish at the time, just like I'm sure. If this ever gets abandoned, the fabric that I choose for this will also be considered super ugly, but I always get super curious. I actually, on my personal vanity, um, found a uh, sticker from a seamstress who had refinished mine um, in the 80s, which was very, very cool to me. I just love the history of old stuff, old furniture, things like that. So. This all has to come off anyway because there is no way I am letting this mold trap inside Kenzie's house. So all of this fabric, nonetheless, whether it's pretty or not, has to come out. <gasps> this is so pretty. <gasps> Why would anyone ever cover this? Ah. Okay. So whoever reupholstered this is about as much of a savage as I am. This is beautiful. Classic white silk. This is gorgeous. This is so elegant. This belongs on a vanity. This is scary, but this is so pretty. I can totally picture this vanity in its glory day with this beautiful white silk. I'm actually going to completely replace all of the batting just because you never you never know. So I'm actually going to replace all of that, but this is absolutely beautiful. I can't imagine why anyone would ever cover this up, especially with this. Ah, that's toxic waste. That's going straight in the garage. So there it is. Step one done. I totally have to Snapchat Kenzie how pretty this was. Ugh. 
can you believe that this beautiful white silk got covered up by that horrible fabric? Ow! I'm filming foil vanity. But seriously, I wish this was like fresh. This is so pretty. Go to Snapchat. All right. She's got to be my reason. Isn't it? Yep, there she is. All right, so next step, and this might not seem like such an obvious step, but it's so, so important. I found this piece at a Goodwill. Um, it's older, for sure. Like, it's very, very old. I would say this piece is 40s, mid to late 40s. Um, clean it. Clean it so good. I prefer to just use um, warm water and just a dish towel or rag or something, but... Honestly, everything that is still on this vanity is going to be on there after you're done cleaning it. So I clean inside the drawers, I clean outside, I clean every single surface because everything that you put on top of this is going to stick. So warm water. Sometimes I use Clorox wipes, but honestly, I just prefer warm water just because I get scared that I've never had an issue with anything adhering to something that I've used a Clorox wipe on. Warm water just seems like the safer bet to me. So yeah, warm water, let's clean it. Okay, it didn't seem that gross beforehand. But look at this. Absolutely disgusting. If you don't have acrylics like me, <laughs> super handy, I know. Um, I would recommend taking a flathead screwdriver and wrapping it around just so you can get in all of these little creases. Almost all vintage vanities have this like waterfall um, woodwork to them. And while it's very, very beautiful, it's kind of a pain. So <laughs> make sure you absolutely get in all of those little nooks and crannies because once again, that's where the paint's gonna settle. Um, and if you don't clean it out properly, it's gonna look like garbage when it's done. So yeah, that's really the easiest two steps. Uh, it gets difficult from here, so buckle up, I guess. <laughs> Take her doodle. Why you want a counter? She's so confused by what's going on. I have a lamp right here for light and she's like, Snickerdoodle! She's my sweet kitty. What are you doing? She's so confused. Her whole living room, her whole life has changed. Kitty, kitty! Hi, lovey. Come here. She is not about Mama's new project. <sighs> Look how fat she is. Damn. Hi, cutie. Oh, oh, she's out. She hates it. All right, so this is where some of the fun starts. Um, Kenzie really loved the way that I personally did my own vanity, which was I left a lot of the natural wood um, exposed. To me, keeping and preserving some of that um, original vintage vibe to it is really important but Kenzie picked such a fun color that I think either way it's going to have a really cool vintage vibe but either way she's like go ahead like keep you know whatever you want exposed wood and do the rest um in the really fun orange that we pick so I think what I'm going to do is just keep these like waterfall features and the rest is going to be that really really stunning bright orange but Kenzie also loves distressing just like I do um so I'm going to be able to expose a lot of that wood through distressing the piece, which I think is going to be really, really fun. So next step is um, taping off. And this is something that takes a long time, but it's worth it in the long run. Um, I actually use two different widths of tape. I always have a thinner tape and a wider tape. Um, I usually do really like big, broad brush strokes when I'm working on a piece, just because I feel like it's smoother that way. So I always tape off initially with the smaller, thinner tape, just to get like those really precision lines, make sure everything that I want is completely sealed off. And then I go over it once again with the thicker tape, just so that when I make those big broad brush strokes, there's no mist strokes, nothing, no paint is ending up where I don't want it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna start taping off.
she's moved on from completely hating the project to, uh... Useful something. Still kind of hating it. Thank you, Doodle. What was it? What, what, what did she say? Me, sweet girl. Okay, so welcome back. I know it might seem like I worked all day and all night from the fact that I was working on it at nighttime and now it's daytime, but what happened was my husband came home with Chinese, so I took a break. Um, I didn't film all of the taping off process because honestly, it's super tedious and super boring to do and probably to watch. Um, but my main thing with taping off is making sure uh, corners stay really, really clean. And that's really hard when you have something with like a curved surface right here. Um, it's fairly rare that I run into that a lot, but with vanities, especially vintage ones, they always have that waterfall feature, meaning they're curved. But uh, the key to taping off is making sure that all the lines are really clean and that the edges are really clean. Hence why, honestly, I love having acrylics because I can like get <laughs> the tape like really into each line. But once again, a flathead screwdriver will do the same trick. Just run it right along the edge when you're done and it'll make sure that your lines are really clean. Once I'm done though, um, especially around these little edges right here, I like to take a razor blade. You can get these at any hardware store, obviously for like 99 cents. Um, and I just like to cut any of the edges that just need a little bit of attention. Anything that's not perfectly straight. Um, like I said, especially down in these corners, it's just impossible to get them like perfect. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through and make sure everything is cut perfectly. Okay, that's it, here we go. Okay, so now that the painful prep is over, the cleaning, the taping off, whatnot, it's time to actually start the fun part, the painting. Um, so I don't like to sand everything down. It takes a really long time and while I do, it does always help if you have something that has a glossy finish like this um, to sand it down if you want it to be like super lasting ages. I don't know. I've honestly sanded pieces down and not sanded pieces down. And honestly, I haven't noticed anything, any difference really with the wear and tear. The best and recommended way to do it is sand it down. But honestly, it takes a lot of time. I have a palm sander. I've used it, like I said, on some pieces. But to be honest, work smarter, not harder. Um, I've always used this, the Zissner Peel Stop Primer. Um, I've never had any issue with anything I've ever done flaking or peeling um, after using this, but I found this one's like kind of hard to come by lately. I don't know if they rebranded it or if they just stopped making it, um, but they did come out with this, the Clear Binding Primer. Um, and it's like a three in one, but honestly, I don't like the consistency of it. It's a little bit more watery and I feel like you don't have as much control over it for big projects. I feel like that would be fine, like big pieces, but this is, you know, something a little bit more precision. So I'm going to try, actually, this is the first time I've used it. The kills primer. Um, I've never used this one before, but when you Google, like what's the best primer, it's 50, this 50, this I've never used this before, but the consistency seems very, very similar. Uh, it has, you know, really, really great reviews. So I've always wanted to try this one. Um, so I'm actually pretty excited to see how this works out. Um, so basically I'm going to start with a layer of this and then we'll go from there. Um, brushes are definitely important. I use mostly Wooster Pro brushes. You can just get them at um, Home Depot. They come in packaging. looks like this. I'll be using this one for the actual paint later. Um, they're just nylon brushes. They're super easy to use. Most of them that you can buy angled, flat, whatever. I always prefer angled. Um, I don't know why. I just feel like I can get like a smoother brush stroke with it. Um, but I use that for these for primer through stain. I've never had an issue with like overly streaky looking work or anything like that. So yeah, I'm super excited. Let's do this. This is the exciting part. I get like giddy. I get so excited. All right. I'm gonna rewatch The Office for like the 30th time in my life while I do this because something's wrong with the Amazon app on my TV. I don't know what's wrong with my TV. Anyways, all right, let's do this.
right, so everything is primed and ready to go. The thing about primer is it doesn't have to be even, it doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, it's probably not going to be. One of the things I love about primer is you can see where it settles into everything. All of those imperfections are really like filling up, which is gonna give you what like that's really super smooth finish for the paint. So there's step one. All right, so a step that I've always done when refinishing furniture, not always done, but through many pieces, I've found that I just prefer to do things this way is add another layer after primer before the final color, um, whether it's white or not, is actually to add a layer of paint and primer. I always prefer um, the Bare brand. I always do eggshell um, or some type of matted finish. I never go with anything with any gloss, even semi-gloss. Um, for this particular layer, for the top paint layer, we'll go into that later. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I just add a layer of uh, pure white, bare uh paint and primer it just to me adds like that extra layer for the paint to pop on especially if i'm doing a bright color like this um kenzie obviously um picked orange which i'm so happy about like getting to play with a really fun color but just something about putting that extra layer of paint and primer over the primer just adds that extra little bit of pop and not only that when you're sanding down initial like so Kenzie's like me she loves a lot of distressing in her pieces she wants it to really look like that really vintage like worn vibe uh so when you're sanding down you're gonna get that that worn look and it kind of adds like a white frame around the distressing over the <laughs> under the orange you're gonna have orange white primer wood and so it just really like makes the distressing pop a little bit more so yeah, I always add a little bit of that paint and primer to this. So again, with the primer, same, similar to the primer, it doesn't need to look perfect because again, there's gonna be a color going over it, um, but it does really count in this case. With the primer, you can kind of just slop it on and make sure you fill all of those holes and make sure you get that just even surface. But with this, you kind of want to make sure that you get it really even and really smooth. It should be fairly easy because the primer is already doing its job. By the way, the Kills primer, I'm a fan. The Zisner primer did the same thing. Um, they seem really similar to me, honestly, um, looking at it in retrospect. But anyways, yeah. This, you want to make sure that you have like a really just smooth, even, just wide, long brush strokes. Same as anything really, you just want it to be even and smooth. So one layer of eggshell white coming up. All right, paint and primer, let's get started. But first, the office. the camera died but I painted it well really it's not um, that difficult um <laughs> anyway so the layer of paint and primer is on and it's dry it's done it's ready so now the fun part um Kenzie picked this gorgeous gorgeous color um I literally picked up like 30 swatches samples and I was like I think I like this one and she was like yep perfect so yeah, she loved the color that we found. So I love it, it's called Fresh Tangerine. I just went through the, uh, went with the PPG, you can use bare, whatever. I did get an eggshell with this one. This is kind of the one coat that it doesn't matter if you go with something a little bit glossier in my experience. But um, yeah, I always just go with eggshell because I like the finish um, and a stain's going on it anyway. So um, yeah, I'm super excited for this part because this is the part you get to see it all come together. So yeah. And I bought a new brush for this one. This one, again, is just like a nylon brush. Um, angled. Like I said, I usually prefer to go with a pretty wide brush um, on these just to get a really smooth finish. So, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so the first coat is on and it's dry. This actually looks so amazing. The color is incredible, um, but as you can see, it's still fairly streaky. Just needs a little bit of extra love. So this is definitely gonna get a second coat before we start in with the distressing, but uh, same deal as first time, just really like long, even, um, soft brush strokes. Oh my gosh, I'm just loving how this is turning out. So, all right, coat number two. I peeled the tape off. I didn't film peeling the tape off because honestly, once you've seen someone peel tape off one thing, you've seen someone peel tape off everything. Um, so yeah, the tape is off and I am absolutely in love. I just, something about when that tape came off and I saw the contrast between the dark wood and the orange, I just got so excited to get this like rolling. I was gonna start on distressing first, but I went to Joann's and found this amazing fabric. This is so perfect for what I'm doing and it's so Kenzie. I was snapchatting her while we were in the store and um, yeah, this is just so perfect. I'm so excited. Um, so originally I was going to take the silk off the chair that was like previously on there, but I just like shampooed it with like some carpet cleaner and honestly I'm going to leave it on there just because I, like I said earlier, really enjoy seeing um, what was originally under there so if in five ten years someone else refinishes this you know maybe they might like to see this look underneath so i give it a really good clean so it's nice and sanitary now it's forever to dry but yeah that's neither here nor there um oh my tweezers i've been looking for these for like a million years i use the tweezers to pull some of the tape off of like the really creased in places and they've been missing for like days um anyway so for reupholstering the chair, like I said, I'm using the same wood, the same batting, and the same um, silk fabric underneath, um, which I think is going to work out perfectly, actually, because it's a white fabric, and so this should lay over it really nicely. Um, this is a pretty thick, it's not like a flannel flannel, but it's kind of like if flannel and cotton had a baby. So it's a nice thick fabric, but um, yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm going to show you my method for... Um, reupholstering you don't need a staple gun for it i do we do have a staple gun in the garage i think but um i prefer just to use uh little thumbtacks push pins thumbtacks um they lay really flush against it just like a staple does um so that it can just kind of lay right on the seat perfectly the way it's meant to so um yeah i'm really excited so i'm going to kind of get up a little bit closer to show you guys. Um, I did just get one yard of fabric that's even like double what I need, but honestly I'd rather have too much than too little. But yeah, like I said, I was gonna do this dressing first, but I'm so excited about this fabric that we're gonna go ahead and get the seat done first, so yeah. Okay, so step one, super easy. Make sure that the fabric is laid out just super smooth. Pick a nice, big, smooth area the way you wanna face it, so I'm gonna go this way since it's going to use a little bit of less fabric this way and that way if I want to like I think I'm actually going to put one of um these panels of fabric inside one of the drawers maybe the top two drawers um and just like mod podge and decoupage it in there so that it's like you know got the pattern on the inside of the drawer I think that's super fun either way I paint the insides of the drawer so anyways so let's start out just figure out where you want to lay it um next up will be to fold the edges over um, just making sure you get just like a really clean edge like this so that it's not sort of creased on the edge. Pull it really taut and then what we're going to do is take the pins um, like this and then I have this teeny little, my husband calls this my Bob the Builder hammer because it's like it's just one of those super cheap um, medium weight hammers and just hammering those in there and just getting like a really smooth, I mean you want to space them about, I mean maybe like just under an inch away from each other all the way around so um, I'm going to film it sort of far off because I can't obviously hold the camera while I'm doing this um, and then I'll zoom in when we're done and you guys can check out the final result. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll give you guys a bit of a closer look here. So, um, like I said, just kind of evenly space them as best you can. He's going to pause this because... Okay. Turn that insanely dirty move off. So, okay, so like I said, just try and like fairly evenly space them. This doesn't have to be super pretty because it's going to be laying flush against that. So no one's ever really gonna see this until the next time they refinish it. And then the person will be like, wow, who's the idiot who hammered all this crap in here? Anyways, um, so like I said, you wanna try and get like kind of maybe like two pleats just like this, fold it over really neatly. Really, it's just like wrapping a present. You wanna make sure that the top looks like that. Just a really smooth edge and yeah, so we're gonna do this all the way around. And that's it. I actually really like the push pins because you can, for the most part, like push them in and then just hammer them. Um, it's kind of hard to do with acrylics, like I said, but these things are claws and no one should have these. But um, yeah, just make sure that they're, you know, just evenly spaced enough to the where, point where it's taut. It's nice that this is like a plaid flannel because I can pull it fairly tight and make sure that the color is like an even line along here. So it'll make sure that when the process is over, it'll all be pretty even. So yeah, like I said, all four corners are just gonna look like that on the outside and um, we're just gonna go all the way around and the battery on this is about to die. Okay, so here it is, final finished product. Um, no need for it to be pretty on the bottom, but you can see here, I definitely um, clustered the um, thumbnails more at the edges just to make sure those pleats were super, super clean, but there we go, that's the finished edge, so I'm just going to take a screw gun and screw it back into its original seat, but yeah, this turned out super cute. It's absolutely perfect. This is going to be so cute. I'm so excited for this, and I'm so excited for Kinsey to see it, so that's it, reupholstering the lazy way. <laughs> So for the distressing portion, I actually use a combination of 320 and 220 grit sandpaper. Um, I'm actually preferring 220 on this one just because Kenzie's like me, thank goodness, and she really likes really aggressive distressing. So um, I do a little bit of multi-directional. It's really easy to see on this piece right here. Okay, so, okay, there we go. So you can sort of see here, it almost looks like cross hatched. So that's when you kind of like get that really cool texture from going both directions. But no matter what, um, on all edges along here, you can see, even along here and even down at the base, just a really like getting distressing on absolutely everything to just really highlight all of the edges. It sort of takes it from being really plain and polished like this and really getting it to look like actually like it's it's seen some shit you know what i mean <laughs> like getting that really good vintage feel out of it so yeah i'm gonna just keep trucking along with the distressing um see right here as well um another thing that i sort of discovered through a lot of trial and error with this is like where to put these big patches of distressing and i kind of like let the furniture decide i know that seems like a little bit crazy but honestly just like taking your sandpaper and just rubbing it all across and wherever it kind of catches and naturally wears off if there's knots in the wood or anything like that like even like this part here this had some like clear natural damage from you know i'm sure many many eons ago and as i was rubbing down this entire edge you know it just catches naturally sort of on some spots and then i just kind of work those areas and make sure that they get that really dramatic distressing so there's my little rough guide to distressing. I'm so sorry this camera's having such issues with focusing, but yeah, that's kind of my rough guide to distressing, so I'm gonna keep going and I'll update you guys in a bit. Alrighty, so distressing is all done. I put the drawers back in so you guys can see. Um, we're just gonna seal it with a polyurethane and I'll talk about that in just a second, but I wanted to give you sort of a close-up look of everything pre-varnish. Here it is. We're almost done. I cannot wait to deliver this to Kenzie because it's been in my fucking house for way too long instead of hers. Um, here's the seat here. Um, you can see on the edge, sort of, maybe if this will focus, there it is. All right, so you can see on the edges here, I really just went super hard with the distressing, but she loves heavy distressing and so do I. What's really cool about this piece, I think you can see it on this side, yeah. So you can see on this side, the natural wood just had a ton of natural blemishes 
and I really just kind of let that do its own thing and especially like right here um, you can just see it really just take on its own nature so for distressing it is really quite easy this piece honestly was freaking destroyed like it was in really bad shape when I bought it and as much as it would have been easy for me to just refinish it all and hand sand it Kenzie was like I love heavy distressing so I was like perfect this was the perfect piece for her it was calling her name and I'm so happy so uh, let's talk about stain and varnish and let's finish it up. All right, so let's talk sealing it down. This is the Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Polyurethane. This is my personal favorite. Um, through much trial and error, I have discovered that this stuff is the mamma jamma, bee's knees, just, it's the kitty's titties. It's absolutely amazing. I have used this on several projects. I have beat those projects to absolute heck and it has worked every time. So one trick I learned with this though, because it is triple thick, do not, I cannot say this enough, do not do this in a garage where it's cold or anywhere that's not heated. Seriously, the crap takes like a million years to actually cure and to dry. Only do this inside. Only do it somewhere where it's warm, where you can get some heat on it, because seriously, I did this in like 30 degree weather and it was it was no good. So another trick, um, I just have this metal bowl and it's full of super hot water. Just set it in there, let it heat on up. So I'm just letting it just warm up so it's a lot easier to work with this stuff. It, it's great, but it has to be the right temperature. So metal bowl, hot water, and then it's ready to go on this beauty. I'm so excited. Okay, so um, I just sat the polyurethane varnish in some hot water for about half an hour. Um, it's kind of a patience game. I'm gonna take the drawers out. Um, but yeah, it's finally ready, so I'm super excited. This is essentially gonna seal everything. I sent Kenzie a really long video and being, I was like, screenshot anything that you think is gonna bug you anything that doesn't look right like you have to do your makeup here like this is where you perfect your already perfect face so <laughs> let me know if anything is wrong and she was like nope it's perfect so it's time for the sealant to go on like I said I sat this in hot water um, for about honestly probably close to 45 minutes um, just because the the thinner it is, the easier it is to work with. It is a triple thick polyurethane, so it's definitely very, very important to get it really, really even because all of the work that you've done up to this point is kind of um, sealed in at this point. So I made sure with Kenzie, she loved all the distressing where it is and how heavy it is, and she was like, yep, it's all good. So I wiped it down with a hot, uh, just wet rag and, um, and just to make sure I got any of the like sanding dust away from it so it's ready and I'm excited so I'm going to take these drawers out and then we're going to get started. Watching F is for Family, if you guys don't know, Bill Burr is a genius, but I know you guys have been begging for a home tour and I feel like this is a total tease, but hi Snickerdoodle! For those of you who don't know, Snickerdoodle was Elisa's grandmother's cat, and now she's my baby. <laughs> and she super loves life under my Christmas tree. Isn't she the cutest freaking thing in the world? My husband put another blanket behind there so that she could be comfy, but... <laughs> she's literally the cutest thing in the world. I'm so obsessed with her. Oh my gosh, hi kitty kitty. All right, well, anyway, so there's my kitty, there's my Christmas tree, and back to the task at hand. So, all right, triple thick por po polyurethane varnish. Jeez Louise, all right. So it's gonna look white right out of the gate, but um, warming this, seriously, is a game changer. Um, I reiterate the warmer it is where you do this, the easier it's going to be. So it looks white, but it's gonna go on clear and it's gonna go on this. So like I said, it's gonna take out the drawers. 
Um, get a super soft brush. This one is the same one I actually used for the paint. Um, I just wash it really well. Make sure that's just super clean, super soft. Make sure there's nothing, like literally no dust, nothing that's gonna bug you on there because it's all gonna get sealed in. This is the most important step. This is where my OCD seriously kicks into overdrive. So, all right, let's seal this thing. I also feel a little bit obligated to show you guys the painting that I have above this. I know that it's been in the background the entire time. And uh, so, yeah, this is a giant painting that I have in my house, and I love it. It's a little bit abstract, but uh, yeah, so it's been in the background the whole time, and I feel like, like I said, it's been such a tease. But anyway, we're gonna get filming. All right, so. Let's get started. Paintbrush. Um, the big thing is make sure your strokes are long, even, and super smooth. The thing with paint is you can sand it down. It's easy to distress it, take away, add, you know, I did two coats of actual paint on this vanity, but um, just because the color was so vibrant and the actual natural wood was so dark. But the thing is with the sealant, it's one and done. You want to make sure your brush strokes are really, really even. There's no lumps, no bumps, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that's not going to look just perfectly flawless. Like I said, this is where my OCD kicks in. So I'm going to get started and we're going to listen to a podcast while we do it. All right. So just to show you guys, this is what it looks like. And so it looked like it was kind of weird, but from this angle, it makes more sense to me, like checking out like the light, making sure that it's all completely finished. Once again, this, this varnish dries completely clear. I chose to not do like a stain on this one. Um, but yeah, you can see sort of the way that the light is catching it, make sure, making sure that it's evenly covered and it is, that's good news. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do the whole thing just like that. And there it is guys, that's it. So here's one thing I'm gonna tell you to be careful about is all of this gathering right here, even thin brush strokes, cause seriously, this sh will goop up and gather in every nook and cranny that you let it. Seriously, thin, clean, even brush strokes. And it's absolutely painstaking. But this is a lesson that I learned and I learned the hard way, my coffee table, literally, I can't look at it without it driving me completely insane. Because again, I did it in, in my garage at the time, which was like 30 degrees, but this stuff will gather in every nook and cranny. You gotta make sure you do this, these strokes so even, so thin, or else it will gather in literally every little nook and cranny you allow it. So make sure you keep them nice and even folks. Don't let it gather in any of those little, little nooks or crannies. So I got my vanity, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's so messy in here, but we're trying to clean out this room. But anyway, I am so obsessed with it. It's literally so perfect. Amy did such a good job. Love this print. I love the distressing. I think it has all the original hardware. I'm obsessed with it. The mirror is so cute. I love how big the mirror is. Look how messy this room is, oh my gosh. I need to clean it, but that's okay. It's so cute. And then it has this like really cool um, light switch. It's just touch and the lights come on. It's so cute. I love it. Thank you so much, Amy. It looks perfect. Thank you.